Hello, my friends at Evolutionary Energy Arts Family. Well, we have Citizen Keen over here bringing the yellow vest protest to Missoula. And before you say, uh, yeah, it's, it's one guy out here with the uh, French flag and uh, yellow vest on. Uh, sure. Okay, good for him. You know, it's, it's not here in the United States. You know, and many might think it's not going to come here. But anyway, he is trying to get it to come here. He's he's basically standing up uh, with France and likes what the citizens of France are doing to speak their peace and speak their truth and take power back basically from the government that, you know, they feel has wronged them and gotten out of control. And so this past week, Missoula residents may have seen a lone protester waving the French flag while wearing a bright yellow vest, the same garb donned by thousands of protesters who have taken to the streets in Paris in opposition to Emmanuel Macron, the current president. And not just him, it, it's really, it's not about him, it's really about the policies and about government itself, how the government has gotten too big. And government is for government now, it's not for the people. And people are recognizing that, and that's why they're taking to the streets and so this one man, he's, he's wanting to initiate change here in the United States. And he's starting in Missoula. Now, he's not alone because these protests, as we have said, you know, they're not slowing down. As we got glitches going here, which have been going on forever, <laughs> it seems lately. So... He's, he's not on his own. There's a lot more just like him, just waiting. Waiting for the chance to basically make their protest and seek their peace on their home turf. And we are seeing these protests start to spread. We have seen them in Belgium. We have seen them in many different places. And now we have the Yellow Vest pro-Brexit protesters blocking Westminster Bridge. And so at Westminster Bridge right there, opposite the House of Parliament in London, and protesters are blocking it. They're wearing yellow vests, similar to those worn in recent protests in France. And so they're briefly bringing traffic to a standstill. Pastor Byers tweeted content, tweeted content from the bridge showing several dozen protesters sitting in front of traffic chanting, Breaks it now and seeing rule Britannia. Several protesters were seen waving the Union Jack flag, while others were wearing clothing with pro Donald Trump insignia on it. And there's a video there as well. Spokesman for the Metropolitan Police said they were aware of the protests, adding no arrests have been made. And so, you know, it's coming to Britain. And uh, it's not just there as well. It's <laughs> it's coming in multiple places. And so this is talking about the global anti-elite claim. And really, that's what this is. This is basically against the elite. This is against big government. This is against the whole idea of a ruling class when you get down to it. Why should there be a ruling class? And of course, the ruling class is just now as they always were. And to them, it's like, well, of course, the masses need our guidance. They need our guidance. They can't do it on their own. You know, it's even at the point where some at the top don't think we're intelligent enough to do it on our own, to govern ourselves. And really what we need is a complete change, as we've been saying. And so this has been a consistent theme that I've basically talked about the need for a complete change in system and we're seeing it and this article over here show is saying the paris yellow vest protesters show the flaws of capitalism and <clears throat> not that, that we, we want to be communist either you know there can be alternatives between capitalism and communism and yeah, excuse me while i take another sip of coffee and so this is part of the problem with capitalism is when is enough enough? Do you know when you have three men that own 
<clears throat> as much wealth in the United States as the bottom 55 to 60 percent. That's that's the system gone wrong. And some will uh, vehemently defend that to death. I've had people say that. And, you know, some people that are in the system and, and doing quite well with the system. But when we have <clears throat> things like, you know, soybeans rotting away, that could be feeding people that are starving to death in one part of the world. And yet we have trade wars going on. And, you know, that's not a system that's really for people of the people. And we need to come together. So what really I am hoping to see out of this movement is that that movement that will finally become a true global movement that will put into effect changes that will actually help the average common person across the globe. And again, let's celebrate our differences and let's Let's embrace that. The differences of culture, the different traditions, let's enjoy that. Let's, you know, it's wonderful. To me, uh, I'm kind of a foodie, and yeah, I'm definitely a foodie. And also, I love exploring different cultures in every way. So I love to go to different ethnic restaurants whenever I could. That's my favorite thing to do, is to get really fully immersed in a culture, and especially in their food. And not just the typical ones that we see all the time, but trying to find more and more exotic ones. And because you get to understand the people that way. And, you know, we don't need to change each other. And we don't need everybody to have exactly the same sort of system set up. We just need to get along and to be peaceful. And part of this whole thing is that that war machine that we've seen that feeds off itself. And, you know, one person had made a comment that war is not profitable, and that's one of the most erroneous comments you could make, because war is extremely profitable when you look at it. And, and there are those that have played both sides of the fence in both World War One and World War Two and gotten very, very rich out of it. The whole military-industrial complex jumped to an all-new level after World War Two. And so we need a true revolution in thought. And so let's try to make it a peaceful one. But this does need to spread to the point where we actually get governments to make changes. And, and you know, we've seen that Macron is making concessions left and right now. And so here uh, I'll have links for these various YouTube channels. Uh, this is Nubris, and they're, color, they're covering the Yellow Vest um, in London. And uh, they're actually blocking many bridges. So it's not just even uh, just the one bridge. And so realize that a lot of these protests are going to be underreported in certain spots, and they're going to be overreported in certain spots. You know, uh, of course, the governments, you know, uh, don't want people to know how much protesting is going on in their own countries. That's going to be something. So this is um, one that you could go ahead and check it out. He has some coverage going there. And over here in Hungary, thousands march in Budapest against slave law. And so these protests, they could be against different items, but this is a global awakening. Make no mistake about it. This is a global awakening, and um, we are seeing this awakening spread all over the world. So here you have Hungary. We had talked about Greece. We had talked about Italy. We had talked about Belgium, you know, many different uh, countries. Over here, Israel. There's protests in Israel. Now, you know, who would have thought, this one kind of surprised me a little bit, uh, but yeah. Israel as well. And so everywhere we look, these protests are going to spread. These are, uni they're going to be a universal protest. Uh, I, or I should say they, sh they are going to be universal around the globe. And, you know, it's, it's protest against the system. It's against the system. The recognition that the will of the people around the globe is not being done. It's the will of the elitists around the globe, and we recognize that. And this is part of the bigger picture, the much, much bigger picture going on. 
And again, I have all these links for you guys. And let me know when you see them as well. Analysis in, in democracy's political chaos, a new model emerges. Well, yeah, what is that new model going to be? And um, I love to watch historical things. And I was watching basically um, something on the history of democracies and how it all started with the Greeks and stuff. But when you look at Greek culture and all, it, it really is a remnant of a much more ancient culture. And that's really what we have around the globe as well. We have evidence of these ancient cultures. You know, off the coast of Western India are buried uh, cities, you know, deep in the uh, Indian Ocean right now that have the same sort of uh, architecture and the same sort of design and feel to them. And it's not just even there. there there's other ones buried off the coasts during which time period we had uh, the Ice Age and the coasts, you know, the, the oceans were lower than they are today. And um, we may be heading back to that whole uh, thing again as well. As, you know, things ebb and flow and everything changes. And so it's amazing how short-sighted we can be when we can, you know, we are basically taught to think basically, you know, you have democracies and then you have, you know, communism. Things have been set up on purpose to be kind of um, in opposition of each other. If we look at the Albert Pike letter uh, of 1871, it, it talks all about that. It's, it's all about keeping us basically at odds with each other and creating destruction and order, order out of chaos because of you know, from the remnants of this, something else will come to be, which will allow them to even gain more power. And this has been going on in our history, our known history. This has been going on. And, you know, are we really such warlike people? Well, I mean, most of the people I meet every day are pretty, pretty damn nice when you get down to it. And uh, I think the people that are more actively engaged in the system tend to get more frustrated and irritable and it's because of the system i think <clears throat> i think that if we found ourselves out of the system people overall would be much happier much healthier and um yeah we'll get along a lot better it's the system for the most part that creates the dissension the bickering <laughs> the fighting you know, it's the system that puts us against each other. Yes, there's always going to be people that want to get out there and conquer the world. Your Genji's Khans of the world, your Caesars, your Alexanders, and, and the like, and the such. But we need to come together and be unified in our diversity. That's, that's the real lesson here. Let us embrace our diversity, not try to force ourselves on anybody else or our ways on anybody else. And by perhaps breaking it down, we can build it up again in the right way. And so we see a lot of military things going on. And as we've talked about, you know, the Illuminati have had the plans, according to some sources, for three world wars. And of course, with the global revolution spreading, they're going to do whatever they can to divert attention. And hence, we have seen there's been so many false flags in order to create a new mindset. That is a technique they always use, and they also use war. And so you know, right here you see Russia to set up Caribbean base and to meet Israeli brass to discuss Iran. Be aware of everything going on, and we can see it, and you guys know it's going on. And uh, they are still desperately trying, and they will. They would much rather have a world war that culls the population tremendously and also gets the heat off of them they would embrace that in a heartbeat you know take the heat off of them focus it elsewhere keep us divided knock off a big percentage of the population get people you know to the point where they'll embrace anything that's what they're trying to do here you know so be very very aware there there are elitist forces that are trying desperately to start world war three because we see the true revolution is starting and as we wake up and we must really strive to do this in a peaceful way so, you know, these protests need to stay peaceful and give them no opportunity to, 
you know, shut down or come down militarily into a martial law situation because, you know, then you would have to have, and hopefully it would happen, that the military would have to wake up in mass and basically lay down their arms or refuse to fight against their brothers and sisters. Russia deploys in Crimea 100 new type combat aircraft. This is stuff uh, from Ukrainian intelligence. These are Su-27s and Su-30 airplanes whose range allows them to operate throughout the Black Sea region and almost over the entire territory of the Ukraine. Ukrainian military intelligence official Adam Skibitsky said uh, Russian, Russia has additionally employed in Crimea a hundred of the new type of combat aircraft. And so we see the buildup going on. And, and today was actually a day that was designated as a possible day for um, some military action by the Ukrainian forces as supposedly they were building up uh, significant forces on the border over there. Erdogan and uh, Trump discussed Syria as Turkey warns of new military operation and, and Turkey is hitting the Kurds, who they've always had issues with. The Kurds want their own homeland. The Kurds have basically been a ping pong ball, bounced all over the whole area there, and they truly want their own homeland. And they've done fighting for the U.S. against uh, quote unquote ISIS forces. And then basically, uh, according to some, been just kind of ignored and abandoned after, you know, they were used. And so now Syria wants to push the Kurds, you know, as well. And, you know, the, the Kurds' traditional homeland is an interesting thing to look into uh, as it's spread over that whole area. And so Turkish forces will enter a Syrian town of Mambish. If the U.S. does not remove YPG members, Ergenon said earlier, and Turkey will launch new operations as well. So, uh, you know, we, we're all, everybody's weary of what Ergenon and Turkey will do, as they are an official NATO mem member, but you know they're not really working with NATO. There's been over 2,000 ceasefire violations registered in Ukraine in the past week. And that's according to Russian OSCE envoy. That's a lot. So basically, obviously, this is getting hot. And uh, I think over here in the West, unless you go looking into these type of sources, you're not going to find anything about it. There's very little about it. And so, you know, I've had people say, why are you, you know, pulling Russian sources? Are you a communist? No, I just want to see what everybody is saying. You know, how do we know what's going on unless we're looking at all sides of the story? You know, party A, party B, and everybody surrounding all those parties, all the neighboring countries. Get a well-rounded view of a situation and not be blinded by propaganda, whether it's your own countries or the, or the perceived opponent's country. So we need to think out of the box, and so many people, you can see when they've been indoctrinated and are in the box, and, you know, I've, I have a lot of friends that have been in the military, and, and some, because of what they've gone through, uh, are very awakened, and, and they understand the big picture to totally. They know what's going on, they know it's, you know, the illusions, and then there are others that are so conditioned that they can't let it go and they view everything as black and white just completely black and white so the dow dropping 400 points amid rising fears over global growth or lack thereof it's over 450 points now so you know the crash apparently is coming it's been 10 years since uh, 08 and the biggest recession that we've known what's coming in every way is supposed to, from what we've felt and all of the things that we've heard, uh, in order to give us that global reset. And, you know, there's, there's these conflicting thoughts. You know, there's those that are holding out hope that there really are white hats that are going to come to the rescue. And there's going to be peace. You know, there's going to be no war. There's going to be peace. There's going to be a global reset. And we're going into a golden age. And then, you know, there are those that say, no, what's, what's coming is going to be the biggest um, financial collapse we've ever seen in, in the world, perhaps in world history, certainly in modern world history. 
and then we're going to see, you know, basically wars and revolutions, and then out of that there will be some new order that comes. And it won't be that new world order that uh, the first President Bush spoke of, because that's already been in effect. That is something that goes back to Roman times. When you look at it, it's so clear that we've, we've been living under that order forever. And basically, when they, when they talk about it, they're talking about just basically just, you know, gaining more and more and more complete control that's yeah, right out there in open, in the open. And, you know, there are those that talk about bringing back monarchies and stuff. That's crazy. You know, the time of, of that whole thing is way gone. You know, there, there were so many injustices going on. And when you consolidate power into the hands of one person, that is so dangerous, whether that's a military dictator or a monarch. And that is something the world does not need at all. We need to come to a consensus and we need to agree to disagree and to do things in a more individual way, but yet understanding the whole. And now we, we did have all these bomb threats yesterday, all these crazy, crazy bomb threats around the country that panicked so many people. And so there was an explosion at the Mark West Energy Gas Plant in Pennsylvania, and some were concerned this was re possibly related to it. Uh, as from what we've seen, there's no, uh, there was no explanation, and um, not to get up in arms about that being, you know, possibly related to all of what the authorities had said was nothing but just a, a mass email hoax. So. This explosion definitely got some a little bit nervous, uh, but at the same time, more than likely had nothing to do with it. There's a mystery as two U.S. technicians are killed at McMurdo Station in a remote Antarctic uh, scientific base, and they were working on a fire suppression system. They were found unconscious after helicopter pilots spotted smoke coming from a building down there. And anytime we see anything going on in the Antarctic, it always raises an eyebrow because you wonder what's really going on there. Uh, and that's the big question. And we've seen with uh, the ice melting down there, strange shapes and strange things that kind of point to the fact that it wasn't always just a frozen wasteland. So we have a pet chihuahua tries to protect the owner in a Pennsylvania bear attack. This lady was actually dragged um, 80 yards by a bear by the leg and she's suffering from you know deep wounds and, and broken bones and the whole time her pet chihuahua was trying to protect her and save her don't estimate chihuahuas you know not that they're gonna beat up a bear but you know what they are fierce at times and they will protect their owner as best as they can even if they're only five pounds and luckily she did survive and uh, they are on the lookout for the bear right now and uh, they will euthanize it when they do find it. So green balls of fire, we've talked about this comet, it's getting close, it's gonna light up the sky, and this is the closest pass of a comet for 20 years. So automatically, that, as I've shared with you guys before, it gets me thinking of Nostradamus, because he talked about, you know, basically vengeance and disaster and destruction happening all at once when the comet shall pass. So the question is, is that the comet? And so he always wrote in quatrains, except for this letter to his son Caesar, uh, which is really interesting. And um, he, he just kind of puts it all together. And uh, the one thing that he, he talks about in here that really, really sticks out is basically this revolution. And so he talks about the 20th century, you know, and, and says that the 20th century is going to end in war and war will hold it under its sway. And the same thing will keep going with the 21st, which we've seen with 9-11. And then oh, we have Afghanistan, we have Iraq, Syria, you know, it's just one thing after another. But he talks about the revolution that comes in this time period or the time period just after. Some countries will be in the grip of revolution for several years and others ruined for still a still longer period. 
And so he says, And now that we are in a Republican era with Almighty God's age and before completing the full cycle, he talks about the monarchy to return and then a golden age. And uh, for according to the celestial signs, the golden age shall return. And it goes on and says, with the world near to an all-encompassing revolution. So he talks about this. You know, he talks about many wars and stuff. And the, everything getting to the point where, you know, before and after these, humanity sh shall, be, uh, shall several times be so severe, severely diminished that scarcely anyone shall be found who wishes to take over fields, etc. But he talks about this global... <clears throat> world revolution that's going to come. And so it so clearly uh, seems to me, you know, that these things that we are seeing here could be the forerunner of that. And, you know, be suspicious about everything. Do we know that Nostradamus even really existed? He, you know, this he wrote that in 1555. That's a long time ago. History is written by the victors. Um, so I'm not saying that I totally believe in Nostradamus or the works of Nostradamus. I do believe in predictive programming. And so I do think that is used. We can see how marketing is used to sell us things. We can see how, you know, we are barraged all the time by certain ideas because they want it to sink into our collective subconsciousness. And we do have a collective subconsciousness. As Jung said, it is as if each one of us are individual peaks and waves, but we're all in the same ocean. We all are the same ocean. And so whether you know, we're, we're looking at any of the ancient prophecies, when they are saying basically the same thing coming from everywhere, you know, the couple of options that we could look at. One, we're really looking at something that we're all tapping into and uh, is something that we all have the ability to tap into or... You know, it's predictive programming because those in charge are giving us these for us to fulfill. By us, you know, looking, noticing, thinking about it, having it come to mind when things like this come up, perhaps helps aid it come to pass, and perhaps it helps aid their plans, their ultimate plans, to come to fruition. So we need to be aware of all that. And so that begs the question, you know, what are we to do? Well. We do need a, uh, a revolution as far as a revolution of, of mind and of spirit. We need to reconnect with uh, the planet as a whole and, and the bigger unity of all life. Because this, this planet has been trashed by the powers that be, the corporations, the greedy self-serving interests. You know, they have basically you know, destroy the world with impunity, passing on toxins, you know, to all the creatures of the earth. You know, we see that with, you know, Roundup being found in mother's milk. And, uh, you know, it, it's just a horrible situation where they spread the toxins across the skies with the chemtrails and with all their pesticides, their GMO foods, trying to control the food supply, trying to, you know, actually making it so that you know, seeds won't replicate on purpose in order to control food supply. We, can, we have no doubts when we really look closely that those that are really in charge of things, they're not humanitarians. <laughs> not at all. They're not even slightly humanitarians. They don't really have the greater good in mind. They have their own good in mind. And they have control. And it almost feels like they would rather destroy everything than lose control of it. So we need to recognize our unity, we need to recognize our diversity, and then break things down by throwing it back to a local level, starting up our own uh, ways of getting along without the big you know, brother that we see all around us all the time. And maybe that means trade and barter, maybe that means you know, different things developing. As we see, there are so many movements right now, so many people, and there's a lot of people on YouTube channels um, that would love to start small communities. Uh, we were listening to, let's see, so I was watching something, and then the next thing that popped up online, you know, they roll automatically to another channel was Rex from Leak Project, and he was live, and he was talking about how we'd love to get a few hundred acres and set up a, an alternative community. And so there are many thinking about doing things like that. So 
that's the type of thing that's wonderful and, and that we, if we could start to work together in more of a tribal way, breaking it down, because through this centralization, that's how you have, you know, the half of 1% controlling the billions of the world. That's how you have maybe, you know, a group that numbers in the millions controlling billions of humans. It's through the centralization. So that needs to break down into smaller units so that we're not under that control anymore. So yes, and that, that globalist agenda, you know, really is one of the things that has been used to control us. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't think globally. We should. Uh, we, we should think globally, but yet we need to do it at a local level and need to do it with the bigger picture in mind and we need to do it without being controlled and manipulated into fighting each other. So what we need to have really happen is to have peace spontaneously break down and break out everywhere. And so if, if the soldiers of the world refuse to fight, if they all abandoned their equipment, threw off you know, their insignias, you know, tossed the guns in a big pile, and just went home and said, hey, let's work on this with uh, our family, with, you know, my hometown and with, you know, wh whoever is there. Let's work on these things together and fix things locally, each of us, and, and have trust in others that others are going to do the same. That could really start to change things. And that's just throwing some ideas out there. But really, it's going to break down to the point where what are the forces, the powers that are controlled by the elitists going to do. As we've seen some, in France, we've seen some policemen, you know, turn around and, and refuse to, you know, come down on the protesters. And that's what has to happen on a global scale, on a global scale. And so take away, you know, the stick from the powers that be and take away their ability to control. And so my friends, as always, thanks you for your support. Thumbs up to keep supporting the channel, subscribe, click the bell, get all the notifications, share with as many as possible so we could spread the word. These things need to be done in a peaceful manner, but you know, we do need real change. And if we focus on everything locally, but be aware of what's happening globally, and we can affect real change in our immediate environment and then around the world all together in unity. So may you guys be blessed with abundant peace, love, good health, well-being, and always be kept safe in these times. God bless and namaste.